to recognize myself for five minutes for an opening statement. And thanks to our witness, Dr. Liz Fowler, uh, for being here with us today as we check in on the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Innovation's progress in lowering costs and improving quality of care paid for by Medicare and Medicaid. Our healthcare system has under, done, undergone significant changes over the last decade, and Americans continue to cite healthcare costs as a top concern. More Americans are stuck paying more for healthcare now than they ever did in the past. Taxpayers are also on the hook for our healthcare expenditures. In 2022, healthcare spending grew by 4% year over year, reaching four and a half trillion, about 17% of the US gross domestic product. During the same time, spending on hospital care reached 30% of total healthcare spending, and physician and clinical services reached 20% of all healthcare spending. Physicians are now all being forced to spend more man hours on back office administrative tasks and efforts by taxpayers to keep costs low. Policymakers and stakeholders from across the healthcare system have, have hoped that by embracing value-based care, high costs and physician burnout will be addressed and patients will receive a higher quality of care. The Senator for Medicare and Medicaid Innovation was supposed to be a key driver for this movement towards value-based care. However, Medicare and Medicaid's transition to value care has, has clearly stagnated. CMMI was established as part of the Affordable Care Act with the dual goal of driving better patient outcomes and slowing the growth rate of Medicare and Medicaid programs, cost, program, cost of those programs. The Congressional Budget Office originally projected that CMMI would not just offset the cost of running pilot programs, but drive significant long-term savings across our healthcare system that unfortunately has not come close to materializing. A September 2023 CBO report founded that CMI's activities increased spending by almost five and a half billion. Under the Biden administration, the center has undertaken an internal reevaluation. Well, I hope this strategic refresh would generate renewed commitment to better fulfilling CMI's mission of reducing costs and improving quality in its second decade. However, I must admit that I'm concerned the center has instead further shifted focus from its congressionally anointed purpose. I'd be remiss if I didn't mention a few specific actions in my second recently that would significantly harm the transition to value-based care. The first is the so-called accelerating clinical evidence model in which CMMI has proposed to slash payments to Part B providers who are prescribing therapies fully approved by the FDA through the accelerated approval pathway. This not only undermines the FDA gold standard, but penalizes those attempting to drive transformative change for patients that otherwise lack treatment options. I've I am further more concerned that CMMI cell and gene therapy access model, which may inhibit the state's ability to use value-based agreements to pay for curative cell and gene therapies approved by the FDA. We have 50 incubators across the country in the form of state Medicaid programs and waiver authorities that give states the ability to shape policies that make the most sense for their budget budgetary needs and the needs of their beneficiaries. By CMS directly negotiating drug rates, for these therapies that weakens the ability for states to negotiate directly with manufacturers or to form state compacts to give states greater bargaining power in these situations. I would instead urge CMMI and CMMS to work with Congress to pass my MVP Act, which I've worked together with a ranking member, which would, which would codify CMS's multiple best price rule and truly allow states to use value-based agreements to get life-changing treatments to patients as quickly and affordably as possible, which should be the goal of all of us. In closing, I hope today's discussion helps us chart a path forward for CMMI that can ensure the center is better delivering on its mission to facilitate innovation payment models that deliver for patients and taxpayers and re-energize the transition to value-based care. I thank you um, for being here today, and I will yield back, and the chair will now recognize the ranking